we had a request to come in uh, for the bravure brush truck bravure brush truck yeah that's a fun one i'll show it to you right now Well, the word bravure is used to uh, talk about excellence or command or mastery of something. It's used in music uh, for musicians and other areas too. When it's used in painting, it's referring to a really confident brush stroke that uh, is a part of the gesture or the formation of the whole painting. Now, uh, Sargent was a real master at using that particular kind of brush stroke, as was uh, Richard Schmid, and a number of other artists, even going back into history, uh, we find uh, artists that will use that brush stroke that has the action that Van Gogh bring. You know, his paintings are made almost all together of really quick brush strokes. They just feel energetic. Uh, and I, I always like to use an, ar an artist that is a master of something to show you an example. We can see here, and we see in a lot of Sargent's paintings, especially his portraits, uh, we'll see the face will be done more with uh, very smooth brushwork where you see more blending going on. But then if you look, he'll do this often in garments. You can see the, the brush strokes, the actual brush strokes are appearing within the subject itself. And you can see how those brush strokes really define the shape of the subject. You see it in the background here. You see it right in here. Uh, we see it in the hair. It's especially, you see it as it's used right here in the hair. It's a brush stroke where the brush is active. The brush is used to define, not just describe. So it's not it, what, what it's not. It's not this sort of thing where you're just using the brush to, you know, I know a lot of people will do that an awful lot. And it just irritates me when I see these uh, illustrations, uh, on, sometimes on TV commercials, but a lot online illustrations that are trying to show an artist painting. We always have them doing this sort of thing. It irritates me because the real master painters don't paint that way. Uh, so... For uh, just do a little bit of an example here to show you how we can use that Bavir brush stroke to make our work more masterful looking. But let me tell you, it requires practice. So it requires uh, a lot of getting used to using it, of practicing, and it, it can't can't be contrived. It can't be imitated. It's something that has to come from your own energy. So I can show you what it's not and what it is. And so what it's not, it's not this kind of thing where you're just using your brush to kind of scrubble or scribble or pick and keep picking uh, in order to apply color or to blend color. What it is though, uh, is it's the action of the brush. Now, in draw and when you're laying in your preliminary drawing of a painting, I can show you how that works. Uh, if you're laying the preliminary drawing in, and I'll just use this uh, as as a subject to, to kind of guide you, and then I want to recommend to you that we have a quick tip, uh, 84, about uh, practicing brush strokes. It's about using those confident brush strokes. It's an exercise you can do where you're doing the same sort of thing I'm going to be doing for you now, but you're limiting the number of brush strokes in order to form a single image, and that kind of forces the bravura action of the brush. So if you were doing the preliminary drawing of something like this, the drawing is going to be done more with your arm, not with your wrist. And the brush is not held like this. 
because then that's only finger action and that's going to limit the the size of the area that the paint will go on to the canvas but the brush is held further out and usually for the bravura action the brush is done uh, the movement is done with the shoulder with the complete arm uh, very little movement some some movement in the rest, wrist but not not a whole lot of movement the the guide the the action itself is guided with the arm so this does require some practice it's very gestural but let me show you how it works now so if you um for preliminary drawing i like to do preliminary drawing with a brush and uh, i'll add a little bit of solvent to the paint just to enable it to go on quickly uh, and so say a shape like this shape instead of going very slow to try to get it right you would you would take that shape as a an action movement so the edge of that shape would go on like that not like this because this then kind of slows you down and cramps and it prevents it from having that life in it that the Brevere movement has. Uh, then on this side, of course, your action would go something like that. It would not, it would not be t -t 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 like that. Uh, like this. Uh, this. This, this, this. Uh, and so forth. And, and as you move on through the image, you simply place it. You're, by the way, uh, preliminary drawing is simply placing images anyway. It's not meant to be a detailed thing uh, that you fill in. It's not paint by number. It's not coloring book. It's painting. It's using the brush to express a shape or a combination of shapes in color. And so we can see that with that action, you can get that life in the painting. And so then I see that shape goes on down here like that, and it goes on that. You see that's the movement of my arm that's helping to create that. And then we go, uh, the leaf goes more like this, so like that. Just sort of play as you go on. So uh, that's all I'll do there for to show you as far as the preliminary drawing. So if you get started with doing the preliminary drawing by allowing the arm, the movement of the arm, and some twist in the wrist, but only just enough to keep uh, the brush moving in the direction you want it to go, uh, then you will find out that that will make all the difference in the world. And it gives you confidence, too. But as I said before, it requires practice because you got to get over that little attitude. A lot of people, if they're just trying to get it right, just trying to get it right. Well, you'll get it right if you just trust it and allow your arm to draw what your eyes are seeing. So that, that covers that part. Now, as far as the placement of color goes, uh, let's pull some color out. and let's get, You need the color set on your palette and ready to go uh, before you start working. So I'm just going to pull, let's see, that's yellow, but that yellow leans a little bit more towards orange. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is one of, my little, one of my little tricks I often like to do is uh, instead of reaching for an orange, I'm going to reach for a, a violet. Uh, this is this is the a conacodon violet, and I'll just create that uh, create that orange. But as you see it, so um, as that as that um, photograph interprets it, it's really a um, slightly saturated yellow orange. So see, that's it. <laughs> I love it when that happens. All right, so I'm going to put a little bit more yellow out here. Now I have that range. Now let's see to make it darker. Is it going? It's going down there. It's beginning to turn a little darker and a little greener. So I'll just pull some ultramarine blue because I know that uh, ultramarine blue and um, yellow make uh, this is a low saturated green. So we need that very. Uh, so this is what I'll do here. So I do have. Uh, a, pro a process I use where I use a value color value line. You can find that in some other videos, but taking the shortcut here, you see that's exactly the green I needed there. That uh, I know because of experience that ultramarine blue, because it has a little bit more violet in it, when I add the yellow to it, is going to give me that desaturated green, which is what I wanted. So let's say I have the ability to get it darker right here, and let's add just a little bit more. Use the violet for that, and we will add a little bit more of the ultramarine blue there 
into this red violet and get that more uh, a violet and very very dark violet will then give us will be able to darken that uh, that that orange like that uh, yeah that's going to do it just like that that'd be dark enough so that is kind of a <laughs> cheap and dirty way of setting it up now the the reviewer stroke requires I, I always like to start in the uh, shadow part portion or the darker portion of something it requires loading the brush get, get a good bit of paint on the brush loading the brush and then find the movement of the shape in which direction is that shape moving if I see that direction that shape is moving in that direction I'll start about right like this and I'll pull with my arm, I'll pull towards the, uh, in this case if it's flower, I'll pull towards the, where the flower grows out of the stem. And then I'll load the brush again. And this is Brevira. When you are using the brush itself to create the shape. And so then I've, I move in that direction with the brush. In this case, I'm allowing the edge of the brush to define the edge of the flower, and then I'm allowing the color that's in the brush to move in that direction. It's the brush moving the color in the shape of the thing that we're working with. And so I need just a little bit more of that red in that yellow, and I come up in here to this part portion, sit the brush on the edge there, and a quick movement down. And you see how you can continue like that. But you, using the following, how the direction you see the shape moving in, you follow that direction and let your arm move with you. Let your arm be what causes the movement, not trying to get it right just like that. And you can see that creates a very, very lively, very, very lively shape. And then we would continue something like, you could even start down here in the dark part and come up like that. See like that? Come up like that. Let's go just a little bit more into that green part and let's bring it, let's start it here and come up like that. And then we can see, bring it up and come up like that. And you see that sort of, because of the way I moved it, it pulls that paint up into the color above it. And so that's the procedure you use. Now I know some of you are going to want me just to paint the whole flower. I'm not going to take the time to paint the whole flower because I want to show you how it works. But I want to suggest Go to Quick Tip uh, 84, that's one of the first ones we made, uh, or in that range of the first ones we made. Go to Quick Tip 84 and practice the way I show you there uh, how to limit brush strokes. And by limiting the brush strokes, you will actually be using that bravura uh, motion to apply the paint and end up with a piece that is more alive. A shape that's more alive it won't look overlooked uh, I'm overworked now here's one thing you don't want to do this is not bravura <laughs> you don't want to make 15 strokes you don't want to go over and over and over because then when you do that it deadens the paint you need enough paint on your brush so that it will cover the area that you're moving in and then uh, you pick up more paint just keep p picking up more paint and keep moving forward with the shape of whatever that image is so this is the way it works uh, that's how you load the brush and by the way one more little thing just in just as far as the technique the movement is what counts for that for that brush stroke it can move in all kinds of directions but what where the paint is do you see where my paint is you see it's on the belly of the brush we allow the belly of the brush. You don't. Uh, we won't get that same effect if we just uh, put the tip of the brush parallel to uh, perpendicular to the canvas and pull it. That will just be like a road scraper. It will scrape the paint out. But if you kind of hold it at an angle and hold it uh, so that your your hand is further down on the brush, not right up here because that's going to cramp it too much. But get down on the brush in some places feels comfortable. A lot of people get way down here. I like uh, about this this uh, distance from the from the uh, uh, the bristles of the brush. I like to move a little bit closer in. Richard Schmidt <laughs> moved a little closer in too. 
So these people will tell you it's got to be on the tip of the brush. That works for them. may not work for you. Don't worry about that. The important thing, you hold it far enough down on the handle so that you've got leverage so that you get the full benefit of that movement and that you have the movement coming from your shoulder that it's a it's a physical activity where your movement comes from your shoulder and not just from, not just this yeah that's just picking that's kind of what i call hen picking but never mind so give that a try go to quick tip 84 uh go through the exercise do it many times with many different kinds of images and see if you're not happier uh with the uh result you get than um you know than just being really really tight with the way you uh, put the paint in so that is both uh, uh showing you how the viewer action works and then you can go look at, at uh, richard schmidt's paintings uh on if you have his ala prima book that would be great because it's a good a good representation of his work there and we can see those brush strokes we can actually see what they're doing uh but then go to uh, wikiart.org W-I-K-R-A-R-T dot org and just type in artist names, Sergeant, uh, Richard Schmid, um, and then you can see others that are recommended that are, that whose work are in very much like or in, whose brushwork is like very much like theirs or in that same vein uh, recommended at the bottom. So study what the master's doing uh, and you stay away from dogma and you'll be fine as far as your bravura uh, brush strokes go. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to dynamize.com where I have full length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.